Should, I should have been there. I've got friends that have been there and it's. Oh, know, in it's Cleveland? Seen, like, yeah. Like um, the Lennon exhibit where they had his glasses with the blood on them and uh, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. really cool stuff. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm a huge rock and roll fan. I yeah, just, I've just never been up there. It's a great spot. Yeah. Oh, we're live. Hey. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Follow me? There we, we go. Got, yeah. <laughs> We Cat got there in the shirt. end. <laughs> Thank you. Did you see my coffee cup? You made you made my coffee cup. Hey, uh, all right. Right next to Sergio. Nice. Oh, that's a cool one. Nice, hey, Sergio. Oh yeah, and you've got some prints back there. Yeah, you're the the perfect visual representative of what we're all about right now. I'm pimping. And the alcohol bottles with lights in it is definitely representative of me right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> at least I want it to be. <laughs> hey, John, you want to kick us off? Yeah. Yeah, one second. Yeah. Well, I think he's just posting on the other social media channels will be good. So, uh, cool. So, how's everybody doing today? Hey. All right. How are you doing? Doing good, Jerry. Oh, I'm doing all right. You know, I live in Texas, so it's cold one day, hot the next day. So right now it's kind of cold. <laughs> well, it might be because you got that fan on. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, we have to keep the house warm, so <laughs> heat rises. True. Jerry, I can't wait to hear how the shoe business is going, man. Looks like things are popping. Yeah, it's going pretty good. It's going pretty good. You know, the campaign definitely helped out. I mean, I'm, I'm at a lot of, a lot of new people. <laughs> awesome. That's They're really so good. good. Your shoes in? are so good. Let's do it. Thank you all. All right. Welcome, everyone, to the first broadcast from the NLBM holiday campaign. Uh, this is going to be an excellent episode. We have, as you can see, a round table panel type situation going on this time around. I'm John McKellar of Bull Caps and Bagpipes, and let's go around everyone to start with uh, and introduce everybody. Uh, first off, my partner. Hi, I'm Jason Durr. I'm back again. I'm looking forward to chatting to you all. It was such fun two months ago. Let's do it again. Yeah, Jason, we finally uh, we finally um, recovered <laughs> just about from the previous campaign. Um, we're going to introduce first off the guy who arranged everything. The Organizer of the NLBM campaign, it's Tad Richardson. Welcome back, Tad. Thanks, guys. Uh, we also have with us uh, some esteemed artists and makers from the project, uh, beginning with Eric Kittleberger. Hi, everybody. Great to be here. We've got Andy Brown from England. Uh, I know you've been on uh, Matt Mutton's show. Uh, this is the first time we're getting a chance to meet, so welcome, Andy. Thanks very much for having me. It's nice to be here. It's lovely to have you. We have Jerry Williams back from Texas. How are you guys doing? How to be back on the show. Thank you. It's great to have you. It's great to have you back, Jerry. And of course, we have Anika Oruk, uh, who has managed to get her camera working just in the nick of time. Just in the nick of time. Hello. Thanks for having me on. You look absolutely freezing, Anika. Is everything all right? I'm f- 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 fine. <laughs> I I just came in from being out where it was really cold, and now that I'm in, I'm I'm realizing I don't need to look like I'm prepared for an Arctic expedition. But um, <laughs> you'll see me slowly shedding layers, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll go back on when you start to realize, oh wait, it's really cold. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's start off tonight uh, by kicking to you first off, Tad. Uh, why don't you kick off proceedings by giving us a bit of a, an overview of how the October campaign went, the October fundraiser, what you've been doing in the background since, and what you have planned for the holiday campaign and even a bit beyond. Great. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, the the first campaign will will summarize by saying that we uh, this was a completely grassroots effort um, we, there's no, no, no contract sign, no signatures anywhere. This is just people um, reaching out and helping people. Um, and what we wound up doing was collecting a group of 102 artists. This was back uh, in September and October. 102 artists from seven different countries uh, on three continents around the world. 
um, who participated in a week-long sales event Oct uh, the first week of October. And um, during that sales event, um, we each uh, ran our own sales from our own websites, our own channels, and collectively uh, sold and, and auctioned off a bunch of original um, artwork and, and uh, handmade goods. And um, in the end, we made a collective donation of over $25,000 to the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, uh, which was really just phenomenal. Something that, that blew me away. I, when we first started thinking about this, you know, my mind was, you know, $10,000, I think was maybe the high water mark of what I expected that we might be able to do. But lo and behold, um, this community came together really quickly and um, and I think that, that frankly, you know, coming together on <clears throat> your guys' show helped create some real great cohesion um, for everybody. So um, since that first campaign, what, what I've been working on is um, recognizing that the only way that, that this community can really continue is if we do it in partnership with all of the stakeholders of the Negro Leagues, which to me, I define as the families institutions uh, and foundations um, um, who uh, are, are vested in the, the story of the Negro Leagues and telling the story of the Negro Leagues and using it to uh, help draw awareness to what they are doing in the communities today. So um, we, uh, we've had some really great conversations um, over the last couple of of months with Sean Gibson of the Gibson, Josh Gibson Foundation, which has led to some additional um, uh, conversations and work with the Buck Leonard Association. Um, and so what we're really seeing is that the long-term opportunity is to create an even bigger community um, that, that it benefits more people and really serves as, um, as a, an engine for both um, mutually beneficial marketing, as well as the social and uh, economic justice that all of these families seek and deserve. Absolutely. Um, I know that I speak for both Jason and I uh, when I say that it, becoming part of this community was so valuable, valuable to us. Um, you know, I think I certainly learned more in three weeks about the Negro Leagues than I ever have in my life up to that point. Um, and we're going to get uh, going to touch on that a bit more uh, later on. But let's uh, begin very simply, guys. Uh, we'll go around the horn. Um, how did you guys get on individually with uh, with the week long fundraiser, uh, Eric? Uh, you know, out of the blue, I got this Instagram uh, message from Tad. It's like, who's this guy? Um, <laughs> and uh, I told my wife, I said, hey, you know. Uh, this guy wants to possibly get a bunch of artists together and uh, try to help out the Negro Leagues. And um, I, I was in. I was already kind of doing my own Negro Leagues art, you know, because I knew it was a hundred years thing. And I just thought I'd do my own series. And uh, Ted saw it on Instagram and um, he got me involved. It was great. Um, I, I didn't have any preconceived notions about, uh, what was going to happen. Um, I tried to sell my art on Etsy a little bit before, um, it didn't work out that great. Uh, but ultimately I just wanted to build awareness for my graphic design business and get more followers on Instagram. I think and Tad has the exact numbers. I think I was around 200 followers um, when this thing started. And by the time it was done, it was over 500, which, so I was really happy about that. And now it's up over 830. And um, it, the campaign did everything that I expected it to. So I was really happy with it. It's a huge Eric one. Um, Andy, how did you get on? Yeah, it was great. I mean, incredible, really. Like, same as uh, Eric there, um, had the message out of the blue. Um, I think from Tad it must have been, and 
um, I just thought, okay, yeah, sure, why not? Let's let's see what happens. And I'd, I'd be doing over the over the COVID lockdown and the the pandemic um, because I haven't been able to travel and paint and do the ballparks that I normally do. I'd been painting these dream teams, like made up from you know the a Dodgers franchise dream team, a Yankee dream team. Um, using the internet, Twitter and stuff to get people to vote for who they thought were the best first baseman in the Yankees ever was or the, you know, whatever team it was. And I had this idea to do the Negro League one, um, but I didn't really want to do it. I didn't want to do it myself com entirely because I think like you kind of already mentioned, I, I don't know that much about the Negro Leagues. I mean, I know it was kind of like there's, there's that glaring lack of um, knowledge that I think is exists where, you know, we know the big names, but we don't know about so many other players who were absolutely incredible. And so I wanted somehow to get a, a bigger entity involved that could kind of help me with uh, the players who might be considered to go on to it. And, and that was part of the magic of all this was how everybody could connect and people could share knowledge and resources. And, and then I created, you know, this, this painting behind me here. So it was, it was superb. It was, it was a lot of work. It was really busy, but it was like just again, like yourself. Like I learned a lot in in the three weeks or whatever it was. Like I learned so much about all the players and the Negro leagues themselves. So it was, it was really fascinating, really good. So before we jump to the next person, Andy, I've got a question because we get a chance to interview you. So I learned today you are a trivial pursuit question. Please explain. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You know what? I've got it on my shelf here. I, it's, I, I don't normally have it right next to me, but there it is. That's the that's the card. <laughs> the arts and literature bit. I think it's going to be, it's back to front of my thing, but the arts and literature thing, uh, it says, what has previously been used to make drinks before artist Andy Brown stitched 1,000 of them together for his portrait of the Queen? Um, and the, the answer's tea bags. Like, um, this is like back in 2002. It was the Queen's uh, Golden Jubilee. I was still in university. It was my last year. It was my final show. And I was paint doing paintings with tea. And of, of like the Falklands War and things to do with like um, ideas of empire and, and colonialism and all this sort of thing. And then I thought, you know what, I'll make a picture actually using the tea bag. So I made this picture of the Queen out of tea bags. And that was, I mean, it was a long time ago now, but it was kind of incredible. Like it just, it was one of those things that kind of exploded. And then, you know, before I know it, I was on the BBC and blah, 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 talking about the Queen and tea bags and all sorts of stuff. So it was, and then it's, and it's just, that was just like, it feels like a previous life now. Cause that was like, that seems like a long time ago, but yeah, that's, and it was that, and that, that card was very, it was very cool. The card because my, my brother came to see me, my younger brother came to see me. I was living in South Korea and he gave me exactly like this, just in this frame. And it was, he just gave it to me. He said, Oh, you go. I've got something for you. And he must've had it for months and didn't tell me, which is, I couldn't believe it. But anyway, and I said, oh, it looks like a triple pursuit card. Like, wh wh why are you giving me this? And he said, look, just read it. So I read it and you know, there's one about Forrest Gump. There's one about the Pope. There's one about Concord. And then there was one about me. And I was like, whoa, like that's ridiculous. And you know, I just stared at it for a few days and, and you know, that's, that's, that was, that was, that was that. So it, it, yeah, kind of, kind of interesting, different, I guess. That's really cool. I'll yeah. have to track one down and have to set it down to you to get an autograph on it. So I'm going to say I have an autograph for your pursuit card. Yeah, I've no idea. Like, I know my brother's friend was playing the game and then he, like, he'd read it out and he was like, oh my God, that's, that's James Brown's brother. So, um, so it was, you know, it was, I don't, I don't go through sets trying to find more cards or anything like that. Oh, yeah, I'm not that. Like, <laughs> so, Andy, anyway, literally teabagged our monarch. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. There's a few, there's a few bits there. So. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, uh, how did you get on with the, the first fundraiser campaign? Ah, uh, you know me. I'm just a regular sports artist. I'm jo normally drawing stuff for sports sports shows that come up, autograph shows, those kind of things. And I had just got into doing uh, custom shoes, and uh, Mass Adams hit me up with a with a campaign. It was kind of like, do you want to be part of a campaign with like a hundred like a lot of different artists doing like. Um, uh, baseball art and Negro League art. And I was like, yeah, sure. Cause like, I've never been part of anything. So I was like, it's a great opportunity. So I hit up Tad and he was very welcoming, brought me in, let me know what was going on. And the whole process was great. You know, meet new people and meet new artists and exchange a lot of information. It's been like a, a whole great process and I was able to do a lot with it. So I'm glad I was able to come back on again for the winter uh, campaign. Awesome, Jerry. Um Arika, how did you get on with the first campaign? 
Oh, sorry. I was muted. I forgot I muted myself earlier when I had to sneeze. <laughs> I forgot to undo it. <laughs> um, the first campaign was awesome. You know, um, I think it was just, for me, the, the most exciting part was uh, being a part of something, being a part of a community that was all working toward a uh, similar goal, but also having an excuse to um, dive into some of the things that I've been wanting to do for a while and some of the research. Um, I've, I've always, you know, since I started um, the book that I did about women who play baseball, there, there was like this whole area that I really wanted to dive into that I kind of couldn't, I had so many bookmarks, you know, on my browser of like, okay, these are things I want to come back to because if I don't stick to the stick to the, my narrow focus, I'll never finish the book. But um, the women who played in the Negro Leagues was one of those things that I really wanted to dig into. Um, and then once I did just through this process, um, you know, I felt like I had a decent grasp on, on the history of the Negro Leagues. And I was obviously, I, I just instantly proved to myself how wrong I was because um, just, just even digging into that one little slice of the history of women within the Negro Leagues, I started uncovering all kinds of names of women who had managed and owned, you know, there are three women who played, but then, um, you know, the women who were involved beyond that, it was like, well, this is like a whole area of this piece of history that is already underrepresented that that is like even less to that in art and um, bring those forward. So, um, and it was exciting to see a response. It's always exciting when you do the thing that you want to do that you're interested in and people actually respond and want to buy it. It's like, Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I'm not just uh, pulling this out of my ass. Okay. So, um, and, and, you know, just knowing that it was all going towards something bigger than, than what I was doing is really cool. So um, I'm excited that we're doing it again. I, so much has been going on that I feel like I haven't had quite the time to put as much into this one. But what's great is that we've got such like a great momentum in a community that I don't feel like, um, you know, it feels like it's cool. We're all part of something and it's happening and I don't have to like, you know, I can just do what I can do and be involved and, and be a part of it. And um, yeah, it, it's still, it's still awesome. It's awesome that we've got this momentum going. I think certainly from uh, our discussions, Tad, uh, Nika, one of the things that I think we've learned as a collective is that, you know, everyone doesn't have to be burning the candle at both ends and going 120 miles an hour all the time. Uh, it is a longer term project than I think even Tad initially expected it to be. Um, so definitely there is scope to maybe not throw ourselves in at the deep end so much uh, moving forward. I think that that's probably a valuable lesson that we all learned uh, from the first campaign. Um, guys, uh, what have you learned or have you learned anything in particular about Negro Leagues baseball since the first campaign? Um, have you managed to get a lot of studying done about Negro Leagues baseball? Has it kind of sparked an interest in learning more about the history? Uh, we'll start once again with you, Eric. Um, you know, I... Mine started, this book, my parents bought this book for me, the greatest, 100 greatest baseball heroes, probably in mid seventies. And it had Josh Gibson and Satchel Paige in it. And I was always intrigued by their story. Um, and so I, I've really always been a fan of the Negro League since then. Um, but uh, you don't hear about some of the players um, that I have learned about, you know, over the course of the last couple months. Um, and I think you'll learn a lot about their humanity, I think more than, uh, than their great deeds on the ball field. Um, yeah. You know, Josh Gibson, great home run hitter, Satchel Page, one of the greatest pitchers of all time. Um, but you really learn about them as people and uh, like talking to Sean Gibson, he tells you about Josh and how he was in real life. And, and when you ask him, Hey, you got any different pictures of, of Josh around? He always likes to uh, bring up the ones where Josh is in a business suit, you know, in a tie and, and he looks great. He's such a good looking guy. And um, he's in that suit. And it's just like, one of these days I'm going to do a, a poster of him in a suit, you know, just for Sean, because, uh, 
I mean, those are the kind of things you don't even think about. You just, you see all the cool photography and the cool, you know, the twenties and the thirties and forties and that uh, great black and white photography, but you just don't know, uh, know the players as real people. And I think that's what I learned about. That's a great answer. Yeah. Um, and also these were, to touch on the suit, these were very shrewd, very smart business people uh, that were involved in Negro League Baseball. You know, they weren't, they weren't just silly, silly athletes who were, you know, walking funny onto the field and kind of swaggering around. They were very intelligent and very switched on people because they had to be, um, because they were kind of forced to, forced into a corner of having to put together Negro League Baseball because of segregation. They had to be very smart about it and how they marketed themselves and how they carried themselves had to be of the highest possible standard pretty much all the time. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Talking to Buck Leonard's uh, daughter and grandson, I believe, uh, you know, Buck was a really stand up guy, really, you know, people listened to him, respected him. Uh, when he talked, you know, he, uh, he commanded respect. And I, I think he was like um, either a stockbroker or uh, some kind of finance guy after after he was done playing. So, yeah, these guys were amazing people. So, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's great to learn about that. Andy? Yeah, I mean, similar, really. Just just the huge, well, just a lot more than I'd, I'd known before. Um, I was lucky enough, I mean, through, through Tad, I was lucky enough to work with um, members of the Negro League uh, Sabre Committee, um, Leslie Heafy, Jim Overmeyer and, and Ted Knorr. You know, both, all of those three, they've been on the committee to, to elect uh, Negro League players to the, the Hall of Fame. They've written about the Negro League players and, and Effa Manley managers and, and Cumberland Posey. And so you've got this great wealth of knowledge. So that was exactly what I wanted. So, so I, I, I did a few, um, I did like the YouTube discussions with them. Um, where we talk about one position and we talk about three players in each position. Um, so over the course of, I don't know, a week or so, we talked about 27 different players um, and, and extras. We talked about um, um, Alex Pompey and, and, and Effa Manley and, and, you know, all different characters that just came up naturally through the discussions. So it was great. I mean, I, I learned more about some of the names that I already know, know a bit about, but then there was all the players that you don't really often hear about. And, um, and it was great just to hear more about these, um, these players that I think have kind of overlooked. And that was kind of the point. And it was kind of like, well, the, the, the final canvas, well, uh, very often it ended up with the, the bigger name players, but there was still, we were still discussing and still broadening. And it was, you know, very much for me, just broadening my knowledge of, you know, the other great pitchers, the other great shortstops, the other great, you know, outfielders or whatever it may be. And they were great. It's just incredible. Like, I, you know, the uh, Martin Digio, the Cuban uh, player, you know, multi multifaceted, could play anywhere almost in the field. He's in the US, Cuban, Mexican, Dominican Republic and the Venezuelan Hall of Fames. Um, Chino Smith, he died very, very young, but is is back. I think it's 398, 485, 659 is his is his line and and he and, and just incredible players but you know up until up until um these discussions and up until really getting into this project I, I wasn't aware of these people so it was great to um to learn myself but also feel like that i could i could you know through that it would it would facilitate other people to to expand their knowledge as well so i thought um so for me it was just it was just superb just to just to flesh it out more and um raise awareness i think Awesome, man. Great answer. Jerry, um, guys got a question. what have you learned about yeah. Negro League Baseball uh, since the first campaign? I, uh, I'm a pretty young guy, so I didn't know a lot about the Negro Leagues. I was pretty much all about the modern players. But I know back in 2017, I met this guy named Ray Knox. He played for, the I think, the Chicago Giants. He, I talked to him for about an hour, really. He told me a lot about the history, a lot of the things they went through. He told, me, he, he told me that pretty much like their games were pretty much more popular than the games that are being played, like with, with Babe Ruth and all those. But those stuff, those are things that you want to learn in the history books. I thought that was pretty interesting. So in order to like, talk, after talking to him and getting part of the campaign and knowing more of these players, I thought that was pretty interesting to see how far that they've come from now to then, you know? 
and I also think that they have like some of the best nicknames like I have ever heard ever. <laughs> like the nicknames are incredible to me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I had a question for Andy. Right. Um, uh, because the 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 stuff that you did with with um, uh, with with the, all of the folks from Saber, yeah, was some of the best content I think that came out of that first campaign. Is it still available for people to see some of those conversations that you had? Absolutely, yeah. It's on it's on the YouTube. Um, if you go to, I think it's Andy Brown is an artist. I think if you if you Google that or you type down to YouTube, I'm not very good on YouTube to be honest. It got me more into using it. Um, I think they're there, so they should all. But they're all on YouTube. Um, if you type in Andy Brown Negro League discussions dream team something like that, it'll it'll pop up. Um, cool. But yeah, I hope they are. You know, I hope they were useful at the time, but also for in the future, also. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. No. Sorry. I saw your hand up there, Ted. So I wanted to make sure you were. Uh, you was either waiting for your turn, or you had a question there. So I wanted to make sure we got you in there. Okay. Uh, I feel like grandma, it's like third grade again. It's like raise your hand. <laughs> my grandma always taught me not to keep a lady waiting, Jason. <laughs> Anika, uh, what have you learned about Negro League baseball since the first campaign? Uh well, I think, you know, for me, the, the most interesting things that I've learned, um, how do I frame this? Okay, so I have such a love and a fascination for, for the history involved in, uh, in baseball in general, and particularly in the Negro Leagues, because the stories are so um, prominent versus, you know, like, say, there aren't as meticulous um of numbers. There aren't like the stats aren't as meticulous, the record keeping. And so the stories are, are really what like is so what carries the experience forward and the legacy and, and, you know, all of that. So, so that part I love, but what's been really interesting to me um, as of late with a lot of things happening is that I've really started trying to pay closer attention to who is telling some of the stories. And we have some great biographical information, particularly through Sabre, you know, um, so many players are covered. Um, and with someone like Leslie Heafy, who is involved in both the Negro Leagues um, committee and the women's committee, you know, there's like some really interesting crossover there that, that I've learned a lot from. Um, but what I have really found interesting and what I've learned the most from is not just learning information about these players' stories or biographical history or information about people involved in the Negro Leagues themselves in terms of what their their personal story was or their history or as it pertained to the league, but, but paying attention to and learning about history as a whole and reframing it um, from the perspective that I've always learned it from, which is to say that like, for example, um, there is an author by the name of um, Andrea Williams. She is, her, her biography of Effa Manley is coming out next month, which I'm really excited for. Um, but we have yet to read a book about Effa Manley written by a black woman, which to some people that matters to some people, it's just, well, let's get the story out there. I don't know. But for me, the context that she's already been framing it in through her tweets and through the information I've learned so far has really made me want to challenge and question the way that I experience the other stories. So for example, talking about someone like Branch Rich, Branch Rickey, um, you know, framing someone like Branch Rickey, the way that we have in history, he's a hero. He integrated the major leagues. He's, um, he reached across, he brought him in, you know, and, and to learn a lot of different nuances of that story and truths that we have kind of overlooked or we haven't learned about. Um, it is a matter of learning what happened and, and wanting to know the whole picture because it's the right thing to do, but also it's so much more important and interesting to learn the full story because that's what makes it important in the present like to make sure that we don't repeat things or just to honor the history in the right way or to bring forward these legacies and create these biographies and these portraits in really meaningful ways um, to me the most interesting thing has been learning the complete story and there's still so much to learn but um things like you know what and uh, andrea is posting those kinds of things really challenge the way I want to learn a story and it really makes me hungry to dig deeper than what is already available 
And um, that's the most exciting part for me. Awesome. Um, there, guys, we have made a lot of the fact that this has built into quite a community. Um, and Tad, obviously, a lot of that credit goes to you for putting this together and managing to collate these extraordinary talents uh, into the one place. Uh, guys, the next question I want to ask is, uh, have there been any opportunities for collaboration that have arisen for you since the beginning of the first campaign? And if so, what kind of collaborations have you uh, been invited to do or, how, or are you already working on? Uh, we'll start again with Eric. Um, I think uh, I've had a few opportunities uh, for some collaboration. Um, I'm helping Greg Garfinkel. He's, he works on these really amazing uh, trunks. Um, he's done a bunch of Dodger ones. He's working on a Josh Gibson one. So I'm, I'm helping him out with some stencils and logos and um, kind of travel stickers, basically all the teams uh, Josh Gibson played for, Cuba and Mexico. Um, yeah, so I had to really dig down deep and kind of cobble together something that, that was representative of, of those teams if I couldn't find great reference on some of the logos. Um, I had to kind of create things on my own. Um, but it's been cool with that. Um, I've discussed a little bit with uh, the amazing Blazing. Um, I love his stuff. It's just amazing. And he says, hey, how about we collaborate? And I said, I'm all for it. Um, just haven't, haven't put anything together yet. Um, <laughs> but I think uh, what's, what's really great is, you know, when I was at, a, at an agency, you'd work in your cubicles and not only could you throw tape balls over the walls, Yes, very cool. <laughs> you can scream over it. Hey, how do you do this? What? Because, you know, everybody knows a little bit something different. And um, now there's a hundred and some odd artists out there. I can hit up on Instagram and say, hey, I see you're doing this. How are you doing this? Or what's the best way to do this? I was just talking to Pop Fly about how he sells um his stuff you know he puts it up pre-sale for a week and it's done and he retires the print and he said yeah i used to have a store up um but i you know i would sell a few here and there but it really took off when i made it you know uh like a week-long thing and then retire the print and uh he's going gangbusters now um so i i like that that I basically have a hundred new friends on Instagram. I can talk to anytime, hit, hit any of them up at any time. And they're all great. They're all nice. And they're all willing to share um, all of their knowledge. And <laughs> it's, it's sure a heck of a lot more knowledge than I've got. So um, it's been great. I love it. Yeah, I completely agree with you there, Eric. Um, Jason and I have often said when asked why we do the podcast and what's the best thing about it. Uh, we generally say you know, the opportunity to hang out together uh, and talking to each other is always the best part. And uh, definitely, you know, taking on this project, it's like that, except times 100. You know, like we've got the chance to, you know, com communicate and connect with 100 people and not just with each other. Um, and that's probably the most valuable thing that we've taken from that. Uh, would, would you agree with that, Jason? Yeah, I mean, it's it was so nice to meet everybody and chat baseball, and it couldn't come at a better time. Like, uh, like the fundraiser was amazing. We, we were in from the start, and uh, obviously volunteered our time to to go. Hey, look, we do a podcast. We'll be the guys that run that, and uh, yeah, just had a blast doing it. So it's just fun to talk baseball with everybody. It's it's not a thing that happens. Andy can attest to this. There's not a whole lot of baseball chat in the UK. <laughs> not so much. Not so much. Andy, uh, are you working on any uh, collaborations or have any opportunities arisen since the beginning of the project? Yeah, I think it, it's sim again similar to what Eric said. I think you're hitting the nail on the head with um, the, just the just the network and just the fact that you can you can learn you little because I think I think especially with this year working as an artist, you're very often you know by yourself. You you can be quite isolated because it's your own work very often. 
but it's really nice just to see and meet up with other people or, or virtually or whatever and, and, and just exchange ideas on how how they do this how they might go about doing that um and see see how they make things work for them and then and then take you know to share those those ideas so i think that's been that's been really big um I guess, you know, of course, now I've done some work for the Josh Gibson Foundation, just a couple of the, the paintings here behind me here. Um, so that's been incredible to get involved with, like, further opportunities. The the actual piece here might be going over to the States to be on on uh, displayed, displayed in the new year. So that would be yeah, incredible. Wow. That's that's exactly what that's I cool. That's, that's like, you know, that would be superb. And I'm, I'm very excited about that. It was just, and that was through people commenting and talking about it on Twitter. You could see that there was kind of a hunger to to have it displayed or exhibited um so it's just it's just fantastic just to have that that um the momentum and the group and the just to see how everyone's doing their own thing in their own way and um yeah it's been very cool like that really and, and just small little things it's sometimes the smallest little thing you know eric helped me put a logo on and then tad did the same onto onto a post and, and tiny little things like that but that's brilliant that just helps me so much just to be able to that that he can do that for me which which might take me hours and hours and hours so um so i'm very grateful for that really it's it's been a great um and then as i mentioned the the, the three people that i work with ted leslie and uh, jim with the, the youtube discussions they were um they were everything they really were so it was so it was great to great to have them to help me really so it was, yeah it was great awesome man um and jerry have you uh Going to collaborate with anyone in the project since the first phase? Uh, I haven't had a chance to collab yet. I don't think that I found like the right audience for, I guess, like in my area. But I was able to do a lot of work for a lot of friends of friends, like some of Tad's friends. I think I've done a couple of uh, some shoe work for. So it's it it it, it works out. I say uh, at in the at the end of the day. But like, and then in order to collab, I can always put my pencils out in case somebody want to do some collabs on something else. <laughs> awesome, man. Um, so to that point then, uh, obviously you're better known for, and certainly your, your contribution to the project was the sneakers, the trainers. Um, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yours is very much a kind of singular um, and solo art form, would you say? Uh yeah, I'd say it's it's some that some that that's a little bit different. Like I think having artwork is nice on the walls, but I think having like custom shoes or like walking billboards, like you walk anywhere and they're definitely gonna stand out. Somebody's like, where you get those from? And you know, it's it, it's pretty cool. Okay, so I, I was able to to make the uh, Josh Gibson shoes and make them in sneaker form, so I was able to do that. But I do still have the cleats. Their way of, well, if nobody buys them, they're still a good uh, display piece. So I'm still happy that I was able to do them. Try something new, you know. Awesome. Depending on the size, I might have to purchase those and uh, wear them on the field for the Glasgow Comets next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're water resistant, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Certainly need to be rainproof in Glasgow. Um, Anika, Anika uh, have any opportunities for collaboration <laughs> arisen for you since the project began? Um, yes. Well, that's like one of the really cool things about this community. I feel like there's just like endless opportunities to come up with creative ways to collaborate. Um, the only unfortunate thing for me right now is a matter of, of having time. Um, but, you know, being an artist, I think a lot of us can relate, especially right now that, um, I mean, at least for me, collaboration is something that I really wish I had, <laughs> I, I would really like to do more of because it is such a solo effort, which I'm not complaining about when you're, you know, when I think back on like all the real jobs I had, <laughs> when I was like, I just want to work by myself. <laughs> and now that I do, I'm like, oh, well, so things like this. Uh, yeah, I would love to do more of that. Um, I did, I mean, I, I just collaborated with um, a woman by the name of Malika Underwood. She plays for um, the U.S. national women's team. Um, she wrote a book and I illustrated it, but that was not a direct result of this show. And I would love to work with other artists. Um, and also actually I have a question uh, for Jerry uh, that is a not really a collaborative question, although it could be, do you, will you paint, if someone mails you a new pair of shoes, do you paint those or do you like to pick the shoe? Oh, any shoe that comes my way, I can do. It doesn't matter to me. I just have things that 
if nobody knows what they want, I just pref- I just prefer like a certain kind of shoe. But any kind of shoe works fine with me. Okay, I'm just curious because because I have an idea and I just I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> okay, well, that'll be a collab right there. <laughs> I'm gonna buy two large pairs of rubber wellies for two people in Glasgow. <laughs> 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 um, so obviously guys uh, everyone that's on this webcast was involved with the first phase back in October um, and the fact that we're here means that we've all signed up for the winter campaign um, why do you feel it's important to continue supporting causes related to Negro Leagues baseball such as this project we'll begin with you again Eric uh, you know, it's important I think uh a lot of what we've already said, it's um, the stories need to get out there. The stories need to be told um, in ways that people don't know about. Um, and it needs to be put out there because there's a lot of um, these players, uh, like the Josh Gibson Foundation, the Buck Leonard, uh, Leon Day, they've got associations um satchel page used to have an association or um you know where they help communities and uh if we can lift them up and um get their brand awareness bigger um they're going to be able to help more kids in their communities um and it just grows from there um i think the more awareness of, of everything, it's going to just help everybody in the whole uh, situation, you know, and all their different uh, endeavors, whether they have baseball leagues or um, helping out with scholarships and in the local school systems. And, um, and that's what we're starting to do. Um, and that's, talking with Tad, um, that's kind of a bigger goal is just grow this thing out and make everybody aware and just, it, uh, it should help everybody. Now, uh, you mentioned that, uh, and Tad, uh, if you don't mind, we will touch on the future goals uh, in a bit more depth uh, shortly. Uh, Andy, uh, why do you think it's important to continue supporting this cause of Negro Leagues baseball? Same as Eric again. I've got to say, I'm copying all his answers here, but, um, <laughs> but it's the same sort of thing. It's, it's you know, it's, it's so important. And it's, it's it, I, I don't want it to just to be a flash in the pan. You know, I feel like we had that thing in October. I don't think anybody knew what exactly it was going to do or what exactly it was going to be like. How, you know, like Tad said earlier, you didn't know how much money was going to get donated. And you can see that's a huge amount of money. It's brilliant. Um, but I feel like that's great, but that's, that's October, but I feel like, well, there's this community, there's all the people willing there, there, there are people that need the support and, and, you know, we can keep it, we can keep it going. And it, it, you know, it shouldn't just be because it's the hundredth year, then everybody's talking about it. I feel like, well, this, this should have been talked about before and should be carrying on, you know, this should just be part of the normal discourse on, on baseball history. Um, but I think that's where us as artists in all the work that we're doing, we, we just add to that and we keep that going. So I think that's, um, you know, in Cooperstown, of course, there's, I think there's only 35 Negro League players, I think in the, in the, in the Hall of Fame at the moment. And it's, you know, like some of the players I, I talked about with, with this painting and, and who aren't in the Hall of Fame, um, they're incredible players. And, and you know, they, they should be in the Hall of Fame or they should be, their, their, their stats and their, their stories need to be looked at. So I feel like there's, um, it's just keeping that recognition going, you know. Awesome. Now, Jerry, uh, same question to you. Uh, why do you feel it's important to remain with the project and uh, continue supporting the cause of the Negro Leagues? Uh, I just think that it is um, it's nice to do something for a cause and an organization that doesn't get much limelight. I think, like Eric said, if we can push these stories out into the world, it'll give like more of a love and respect for those organizations and leagues from, from the past that don't get a lot of recognition. Like I say, growing up, I didn't hear a lot about the Negro Leagues, but I seen a lot of portrayals of them in like certain films. And it's nice now to start learning about what they went through and the different players that they had, the accomplishments they achieved and things like that. So I think that it's good for us to just bring the campaign into the light and push it into the, the newer generations so they can also know 
what went on back in the day. Brilliant. And Arika, uh, why do you feel it's important to remain with the project and continue supporting the cause of the Negro Leagues? Well, on a selfish level, I just love having contact with all these other artists, but that's not my real, <laughs> that's not my motivation. <laughs> um, well, I, I mean, I think everyone's kind of touched on it a bit that it it isn't something that should just be highlighted or be important this year. Um, there's so many, particularly right now, we're in a time where, um, you know, I think it's really, really important to spend a little more time focusing on um, certain elements of history and also certain organizations who are doing good with, um, with not a lot of attention or not a lot of momentum behind them. Um, and, and also just, you know, there, again, there's just so much to be gained moving forward from learning more about, um, stories that have either not been told or under told or not told correctly. And I think when organizations like like the Josh Gibson Foundation and the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum and other organizations like this, when they have the right funding and they have the right support and attention, um, they have the resources and the right people to, to do the work to bring those stories forward, tell them correctly, get them in front of more people, honor the legacies of these people, but then also help people understand, how, help more people understand why these stories are important moving forward. Um, and so if we can, if we can support them, then they will do that work for us that educates us and, and keeps these legacies alive. Um, but they need, they need the funding and they need the attention to do it. So I think this is a really great collaboration that we're able to channel our creative energy into something that we enjoy doing, but that can hopefully provide them the support to do the kind of work that they need that will benefit all of us. Brilliant. Um, now, Tad, uh, we're going to move on to the last main question uh, just in a sec, but do you want to give uh, anyone watching um, a bit more info on how long the holiday campaign will be going on and what structure this will be taking in terms of uh, uh, roughly how many people are going to be involved this time, uh, what the kind of short-term goal is with it, and uh, obviously uh, a little bit about what we're going to be doing on this particular broadcast next week. Oh, yeah. Okay, that was a, there was a lot there, so <laughs> you might have to remind me. Um, uh, so um, let's start with, um, oh my gosh, uh, the only question that I have in my head now is about next week because I'm excited about next week. <laughs> um, I know exactly why you're so excited about next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Santa Claus is going to be with us next week. <laughs> we're going to be giving away, and we're going to be giving away some some custom made baseball cards. We're going to have a little roundtable discussion with a, a bunch of the the baseball card artists in the the NLBM art community. So that one's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but uh, but in terms of uh, what was the other question that you asked? The more important what was about the holiday campaign going on. The winter campaign, uh, when is it running? Uh, when is it running from? When is it running to? Um, yep. And what's the short term goal with this particular phase of the project? Sure. Yeah, the, well, the, the holiday campaign really is, is, uh, is meant just to kind of keep us um, uh, moving in the positive direction. Um, we, we approached the first campaign with a high degree of uh, naivete. Um, we were, uh, I was um, uh, naive in in a lot of the things that we were doing and relying on, um, you know, the the nods of agreement and and you know uh, signs that we were we were doing okay. But but ultimately, what we found out in the first campaign is that we we um, had the the potential to 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 do some harm. Um, frankly, in a couple of different ways. And so the, what we really set to do was to clean all that up, make sure that, that, that the way that we were building this campaign was from the perspective of those families. Um, and it's been, it's been absolutely brilliant and, um, gosh, uh, like I'm awestruck almost every single time, but to have the counsel of Sean Gibson um, as we build this thing out um, has been um, substantial. Um, so to, 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 to see the long-term, uh, uh, um, ability for us to, to, to move beyond this grassroots 
uh, effort into something that's more structured and um, and and really potentially game changing for the the art community. Um, as well as the families of the Negro Leagues, that's where ultimately we see. So for right now, what we're really just trying to do is, is uh, you know, keep keep uh, keep active, and um, and give everybody an opportunity to continue this partnership that we have with the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum to um, to utilize that hundred year logo to to incorporate that into some unique works of art and merchandise. Um, so we're we're honoring that commitment through the end of this year so the holiday campaign actually goes you know all the way up to the end of the year um, at that time what we'll probably be doing is is switching gears and focusing some on uh we're gonna we're gonna give a lot of love to uh josh gibson this year and and hopefully influence that that mvp vote mm -hmm. um so yeah, holiday campaign runs through the end of the year. Go to nlbmart.com and you'll see participating artists. Uh, visit those artists and um, and uh, see what they are offering um, for the the campaign. Now, speaking of that, everyone, uh, why don't we talk a wee bit about exactly how you individually plan on taking advantage of the the rest of the year? Um, Eric, we'll start with you. Uh, do you would you like to share? Uh, some of what you've been working on for this campaign or, or uh, coaching this time? Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been, a lot of my focus has been on the Josh Gibson put his name on the MVP trophy campaign. Um, uh, so I've been a little more quiet this campaign, I think, than I was the first time around. Um, so uh, everybody's probably seen uh, that. I've been working on uh, stuff like that for uh, kind of the Gibson Foundation. And uh, this, uh, I just put this up on my store today for for a pre-sale, kind of like, like I said, the pop fly uh, guy, uh, how he does. Um, I'll see if I get any interest in it. Um, been, we've been working on pieces like this for... Uh, Sean Gibson. I mean, we're getting quotes from Ron Say and uh, Richie Allen, and we're doing little Instagram uh, posts on that, uh, trying to get get the word out. Um, uh, and I've been playing around with these, so don't tell anybody. But uh, oh, yeah. these are little uh, <laughs> tobacco size uh, cards that. Uh, I'm working with some of my art and, you know, back's got signatures and, and all that. So uh, I'll probably be giving away some of those Josh Gibson uh, cards with, with, uh, if anybody buys the, the big prints um, from my site. Uh, but uh, going forward, I probably will start looking at doing some more uh, little card art. I got people requesting. So um and it's fun. I, I get to use the old exacto knives and uh, uh, T squares and all that uh, back like back in the old days. So uh, it's kind of fun to to get physical rather than mouse around all day. Um, so that's what I'm up to. Um, hopefully, it goes well. Yeah, uh, certainly. Uh, no, Andy, uh, would you like to share some of what you're working on or what yeah. you, how you're how you're approaching this phase of the project? Yeah, I've been, I've been again, like Eric, I've been on the Josh Gibson Foundation. I've been doing, doing some paintings for those, the, the, the two oils behind me. Um, so I've been, been working on those. And then for this actual, the, the, the campaign, this one, I'm going to be starting, I've just started today doing some more um, like actual stadiums, old stadiums, Negro League stadiums. So I've started doing, um, looking at images of those and doing, doing paintings of them. I did a few maybe about a month ago. Um, but they were for something else, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start using those again more, and um, um, yeah, starting to starting to explore that side of of Negro League history. So um, that's really my plans. Does that mean you have a road trip plan when the lockdown's over, so you can do a Negro League baseball museum or a stadium? <laughs> I have a million road trips planned. <laughs> just one of, one of many, so, uh, yeah, just give me a road and a car, please. Uh, Jerry, um, what are you working on for this phase of the campaign? Uh, honestly, I don't have any images in particular that I'm working on, 
But I did promise that any shooting that I do from now until the campaign ends, I'm gonna donate like 20% of the proceeds to the campaign just to make sure I'm always helping out because I always want to just support any way I can. And that's pretty much all I got right now. I don't have any <laughs> show that y'all have probably yeah, seen before already. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, that is, that's awesome. Um, let's hope that you get plenty of business between now and the end of the year. It helps you out and also helps out the cause. So, yeah, that's great stuff. Yeah, sir. Um, thank you. Thank you. It's actually been pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Sweet, man. Anika, uh, what are you working on for this season, Pat, the campaign? Well, too bad. I just told you everything and you didn't hear it. <laughs> um, no, I, um, oh, I am working on a lot of stuff. Um, but uh, as far as this campaign, I actually did do um, a limited run of silkscreen. Uh, <laughs> my first go at silk screening was interesting. Um, so I, I gave it another go and I created some custom um or like a limited run of silkscreen pennants. I got some wool felt um, black baseball pennants and I made a Tony Stone pennant. And I'm excited because I did uh, a much nicer run of those. So there were a few left from the first run, but I've just um, did them. And now that I have a little bit of experience with screen printing, um, <laughs> they look a lot better. <laughs> so I'm excited about those. And those come with stickers, which um, Tad was nice enough to show he's stuck to his mug so i've got some tony stone and effa manly stickers and other things there are shirts also available and actually um uh oh i'm low battery mode the shirts are um are uh through a company called bonfire and the money from those goes directly to the beneficiaries so um those are a great way to go because the, I don't even the, 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 I think we've lost you, Anika. Just a hundred percent. Hundred percent sounds good. Hundred percent, yeah. Hundred percent always sounds positive. I don't think we caught much beyond yeah, that. You. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Oh. Right, we lose her. We lost you, Anika. Um, All right. Um, Tad, uh, are you working on anything? Divided up between the Negro League space. So um, those will just. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can vouch that Anika's store is stocked. Yes. <laughs> With all um, that, all right. Well, we'll come back to Anika. If we'll <laughs> out what's going on and whose Wi-Fi is screwed up? So, Todd, um, I just are you... to be charged. You guys can go. On. Okay. <laughs> Working on anything on the corporal keep side side of things in addition to organizing this, or are you just focusing solely on this project and uh, being the kind of captain of the ship? Uh, well, I have really just been kind of casually participating, I guess. Um, as a merchant, um, offering a percent of all my sales, all my sales um, uh, from since we started the first campaign. Um, so I've actually, uh, I, I wound up in the actually a, a, a gift guide, a holiday gift guide from um, Lookout Landing, a Mariners fan page that Anika was actually in the same article, and and that led to to uh, quite a few. Uh, orders that I was not expecting. So anyway, all of those orders um, that I got 20% I'm donating. So um, the one thing I've been playing around with here lately, since this first campaign, um, you know, I, I have over 80 game used Major League Baseballs, authenticated baseballs that I've taken apart and are in, in some form of, of, of complete um, uh, disassembly. And, and so I reached out to all the baseball card artists and I asked if anyone was interested in doing some like homemade relic cards, putting some of the, you know, leather or laces or that kind of stuff into some, some of their custom baseball cards. And I did hear back from a couple people, um, Bill Cormalis, uh, modern baseball art. He made a card with uh, some Clayton Kershaw 
uh, leather and laces. And I, and I know he's got material from a, a, a I almost said Clay Bellinger. Um, what's, what's Clay Cody? Bellinger's kid's Cody? name? Cody Bellinger. <laughs> <laughs> Cody Bellinger. Uh, and uh, I just sent some, some baseball leather down to Nick Bernard uh, as well, but I've been playing around with, with it myself. I said, with the, the response wasn't real hot from those guys. So I started playing around with it myself. So there's a little cherry bomb. Yeah, those are cool. Last mm. night. And that's hand dyed leather from the baseball awesome. with a little chunk of lace. And so this, oh, on the back side is um, that one. That's so awesome. Yeah, pretty cool. So uh, that's been kind of fun. I, I have all this leather and like before all of that, I was just doing, you know, here's a pair of gold plated earrings from that same baseball. And that was the baseball. Um, it, Mookie Betts w uh, hit a walk off home run in that game. So that's why I focused on Mookie. Um, anyway, so I've been playing around with baseball cards again. <laughs> and I really, I really wasn't doing that, frankly. You know, when I got, when we started into this campaign, the focus was you know, really all on everybody else. And so because there's, because this campaign is less of a frenzy and there's fewer people who are, are participating this go round, I've been able to spend a little bit more time on my own stuff. But frankly, I got to get running here, guys, because I got to go do some work for uh, Rose, <laughs> Rose and Brian at the Buck Leonard Association. I've, we're working on a, a big rebranding project with them, and, and uh, I've got a deliverable that I promised them tonight. Yeah. No worries. We're going to wrap Yay. it up here anyways. We're going to wrap things up uh, here right quick. Uh, so on Ball Caps and Bagpipes, we usually end every episode with uh, Jason's bubble in baseball this day in baseball history. Uh, moment um, and there's one in particular today that uh, I think is quite fitting that uh, is worth sharing um, on this day uh, 14 years ago uh, in 2006 two months after he passed away Buck O'Neill was uh, posthumously awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom um, so I thought that was a pretty cool uh, coincidence that that happened 14 years ago today uh, <laughs> as we're doing this wow. uh, yeah, that's awesome that is cool. And uh, let's uh, quickly, very quickly go around, everyone. Uh, what's your links, Eric? My links, uh, tripleplaydesign.com. Um, you can see all my design work, advertising work uh, there. I've got, uh, right now, I've got a, the souvenir shop is up. It's, it's only up limited time throughout the year. Uh, so right now it is up. And... Um, Instagram, triple play design. Uh, really, that's, uh, I've got all the other ones too, but I really focus on Instagram and the website. So uh, that's where I'm at. Awesome. Andy? Uh, I've got a website, andybrownstadiums.com. I've got my Twitter, which is Andy B is an artist. And I've got my Instagram, which is Andy Brown is an artist. So you can see me there. Thanks very much for having me. Awesome. And once again, Andy, uh, you weren't on the first time. It's just been a pleasure meeting you, finally. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Uh, Jerry, what are your links? Where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me at Williams Illustrations on Instagram. I always tell everybody to keep scrolling down. I'm a sports artist as well, not just shoes. So if you want to see something different, just keep scrolling down. <laughs> also, you can catch me on Etsy, the Williams way. At, uh, that slash shop. Et Etsy slash etsy.com slash the Williams way slash shop. I think that's how it goes. I believe so. If not, just look it up. It's the Williams way. <laughs> <laughs> Anika, where can people find you online? Did she freeze? It appears you know that Anika's frozen. So believe, her phone might have died as well. So Anika or com. I think it's anikaoric.com for Anika. Uh, and it's at Anika Drawls. So draws with an L before the S on social media. Uh, well, I'm, I'm available at my website, which my name is, is hard. Oh, no. Yeah. 
Right, well, we'll plug it for her. <laughs> Just one of those days. Usually it's the man cave that does this problem. So, of course, Tad, want to plug your yeah. 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 Plug yours as well, Tad. Well, you can. AnikaOroff.com. There. That's great. Right. AnikaOroff.com. Yeah. yeah. AnikaOroff.com. And then Instagram and Twitter, I'm Anika Draws. Excellent. Hold it. Yeah. Nailed it. Yep. I'll stand in for any kind of things. It's, um, yeah, that can be confusing. I think I'm having technical difficulties. <laughs> it's all right. We'll come back to you. <laughs> 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 Usually it's me that has the problem, so don't worry about it. <laughs> um, obviously, you can catch us on facebook.com slash caps and pipes. Uh, it's ball caps and bag pipes on any podcast platform of your choice. Uh, we will be back with Tad. Uh, Jason and I next Tuesday for a round table with some baseball card artists. Um, we only have, I think, one confirmed so far. Or have uh, at least two. Two, have, two have confirmed now. Hopefully we're going to have a, a couple more uh, joining us for that. Um, I'm looking forward to that because there are some names there that uh, Jason and I got a chance to speak with the first time uh, that I'm really excited to catch up with again. Um, in the meantime, guys, thank you so much for joining us, whether live or on demand. And uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, before everyone goes, so I wanted to thank you all for doing everything. You guys inspired me, and I've been doing some card art. So I need everyone's player oh. from the early 90s so I can send you a little something, something. So, Tad, yours is done. It's already in the post. Is Eric, the you're an Indians fan. Who do you like from the late 80s, early 90s? Um, I, I was I was really more a Reds fan in the early 90s. So. All right. Could be Chris Sabo, Sabo or any of the nasty boys, you know, Jose right. Rijo, any of those guys. Great. Okay. I, I, I got you covered on that. Uh, all right. <laughs> Jerry, you got someone from the late 80s, early 90s? Oh, uh, what about a good Mark McGuire? Okay. McGuire, we got that. <laughs> There's one, if there's one player that Jason has a, a massive uh, abundance of, it's Mark McGuire. <laughs> <laughs> We're okay in that. So, Andy, any... Uh, I'll go... I think I'm going to go Barry Bonds. All right, I got Bonds. I can do Bonds. Right, I'll take that. Skin, skinny Bonds or, or Great Big Bonds? <laughs> oh, okay. I've a moment. <laughs> Early ninety bonds or late? 90 bonds? <laughs> I, I, yeah, it's a card, so it's not There's big. A big difference. <laughs> the card. John, uh, one of these days I'm going to do you a Munson poster too. So there we go. Nice. Uh, that sounds yeah. that sounds absolutely fantastic. I would love that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Look for that here uh, in the first of the year. So. Okay. And Anika, if you're there, Giants fan, we got early late nineties. No, I think I just have a technical problem. That's fine. I'll drop point. her a mail. So uh, yeah. I'll tell you what. I'll try to get them done this week, and I and I will. Uh, I'll drop them live next week when we interview the card artist, and I can show you what I've been working on. So awesome. oh, cool. cool, cool. All right, cool, guys. Geez. Thanks again for taking the time out. It's always a pleasure to talk to you all, uh, and it, it, it's great to see you guys and hear you guys again. Thanks, Jason. Bye. Much appreciated. Good night. Uh, it Cheers. looks like Anika is having trouble due to snow. Oh, right. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you very it's much. Like, it, looks like, it looks like a storm front has hit uh, Nashville and uh, she's <laughs> yeah, struggling a bit there with her internet. Um, guys, I'll echo what Jason says. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing as part of the project. Thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, Eric, a pleasure as always. Tad, always a pleasure. Yep. Great to meet you. Gary, thank you so much for coming back on. It's uh, great to Oh, yeah, you. Yes, sir. And Anika, um, I don't know if you can yes. hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't even know whether Anika is actually speaking right now. Can or if you hear me? Yes, we hear you. We can hear, we can hear you every 10 seconds. <laughs> there we go. She laughed. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you guys next week. And uh, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Cheers.